Our path to coding up a neural network starts with its most fundamental building block, the perceptron, a very simple linear binary classifier. To introduce it, we're going to work on a dataset even simpler than MNIST. We're going to work on a dataset I made up called MINTS. Like MNIST, I put the MINTS dataset on my public GitHub repo so you can download it directly into a pandas data frame like this. The MINTS dataset represents eight objects in my pocket with real valued features x1 and x2 which you could imagine as the size and smoothness of each object, and a binary target Y indicating whether each object is a mint. When I reach into my pocket and touch an object, I want a model to predict whether or not it's a mint. If we plot the mint's dataset on a coordinate plane colored by the target, it looks like this. There's an obvious separation between mints and non-mints. If we insert a line like this, then we have a model for classifying mints. Anything below the line we say is a mint. Anything on or above the line we say is not a mint. Let's formalize that. So our model is a function f that makes a binary prediction about a point. In other words, the input to our model is a two element vector of coordinates, and the output is a one or a zero. So we can say f of x equals, and then we have two cases. One, if x is below the line, and zero if x is on or above the line, which we can simplify as otherwise. Note here that x is in bold to signify it's a vector of features, x1, x2. Now we have to formalize what it means to be below the line. Well, the line I drew here corresponds to the equation x2 equals negative 0.6 times x1 plus 0.9. For a point x1, x2 to be below the line means that x2 is less than negative 0.6 times x1 plus 0.9. So now we can complete our model as f of x equals the piecewise function 1 where x2 is less than negative 0.6 times x1 plus 0.9 and 0 otherwise. Now if I reach into my pocket and discover a new object with size 0.4 and smoothness 0.5, I can do some mental math and ultimately predict that it's a mint. This model, as you may have guessed, is a perceptron created by Frank Rosenblatt back in 1958. Let's see if we can generalize and formalize it a bit. Firstly, our data had two features, meaning we were operating in a two-dimensional space. So, we described our separating line as x2 equals c1 times x1 plus a, in other words, a coefficient times x1 plus an offset. Now, what if we had three features? Well, then we could just do x3 equals c1 times x1 plus c2 times x2 plus a. And if we had n features, then we could use xn equals c1 times x1 plus c2 times x2 on up to cn minus 1 times xn minus 1 plus a. If we subtract xn from both sides, we can rewrite this as 0 equals c1 times x1, yada yada yada, plus an offset. And if we multiply both sides of that equation by a constant k, we get 0 equals k times c1 times x1 plus, well, you get it. Of course, a constant times a coefficient is just a different coefficient, and a constant times an offset is just a different offset. So we can rewrite this equation like this, where we usually call the W terms weights. This is the canonical form of a hyperplane in n-dimensional space. I should mention that this equation allows for multiple representations of the same hyperplane. For example, in three dimensions, the set of weights 1, 2, 3, with offset 0, represents the same exact hyperplane as the set of weights 2, 4, 6 with offset 0. But that's fine, we can worry about that minor detail later. Getting back to our perceptron, we can reformalize the model to support n-dimensional inputs like this. Except this is kind of wordy, so what most people do is they describe a vector of weights w and a corresponding vector of features x and then you can rewrite this using a dot product between w and x. All right, now let's get back to our 2D example with the mints data set, and let's redescribe our model as 
f of x equals the piecewise function, 1 where w dot x plus b is greater than 0, and 0 otherwise, where w equals the vector negative 0 0.6, negative 1, and b equals 0 0.9. So how did we come up with this model? Well, we basically looked at a graph of the data, and we saw where we could draw a line that separated green points from red points. The obvious next question is, how would you write a program to produce such a line? Well, there's a couple of important things we should point out. The first is that this data is linearly separable, meaning there exists a line that separates green points from red points. If our data looked like this, then it wouldn't be linearly separable because there's no line you can draw to perfectly separate green points from red points. There's a few lines that do a good job, but they're not perfect. This concept of data being linearly separable extends into three and higher dimensions as well. In three dimensions, if you have data like this, if you can separate green points from red points with a plane, then the data is said to be linearly separable. In the general case, if you have two sets of points x1 and x2 in Rn, if there exists a hyperplane in Rn such that every element in x1 lies on one side of the hyperplane, and every element in x2 lies on the other side, then the data is linearly separable. More formally, if there exists a vector of weights w and an offset b, such that w dot x plus b is less than zero for every x in x1, and w dot x plus b is greater than zero for every x in x2, then the data is linearly separable. For example, if we're in R4, then x1 might represent this set of points, and x2 might represent this set of points. Looking at the equation for a hyperplane in R4, the question is, can you come up with a set of weights w and an offset b, such that plug in every point from x1 and you'll get back a value less than 0, and plug in every point from x2 and you'll get back a value greater than 0. If there exists a set of weights and an offset that do that, then x1 and x2 are linearly separable, otherwise they're not. This brings up another fascinating question. Given a random data set with two classes, how do you figure out if it's linearly separable? We'll circle back to answer that question, but in the meantime, let's assume that every data set we're going to work with is linearly separable. The second thing to note about the mints data set is that there's a lot of different lines we could have picked to separate the data. We arbitrarily chose this one, but we could have picked this one, or this one, or this one. Of the infinitely many lines that separate the data, one line of particular interest is this one because it goes right down the middle of the gap between red and green dots. This is what's known as a maximum margin classifier because it has the biggest possible margin on both sides. Finding this guy is the objective for support vector machines, aka SVMs. Unlike support vector machines, perceptrons aren't so needy. The goal of a perceptron is just to find any line that separates the classes. Let's get back to our big question. Given a set of data with a binary label, assuming the data is linearly separable, how do we find a hyperplane that separates the class labels? Take a moment to really think about this. How would you do it? It's not exactly trivial. A good way to approach problems like this is to start with a really dumb but simple solution. This will help you wrap your head around the problem and develop an interface for inputs and outputs. So what's a really dumb but simple way we could find a separating hyperplane for some set of data? Well, let's use my favorite algorithm, guess and check. Just randomly guess some weights and an offset and check if they separate the data. If they do, we're golden, and if they don't, just keep guessing. My challenge to you is to write a program that does this. To help you get started, I created a Python file called 2.2 challenge, which contains some starter code and references to some known separable datasets. I also made a function called plot dataset, which lets you plot a 1D, 2D, or 3D dataset with a hyperplane. So, Pause the video and see if you can implement a guess and check program for finding a separating hyperplane.
Before I explain my code for my guess and check algorithm, let me explain the logic. Rather than guess truly random hyperplanes, I wanted to guess hyperplanes that at least cut through the data. To do this, I imagined putting a bounding box around the data and then selecting a random point within the bounding box. From there, I guess random values to determine the slope of the hyperplane by guessing random weights, and then I solve for the offset B to force the hyperplane to go through P. So here's my code. I start by creating a NumPy random generator. If you're not familiar with this, check out my lecture on random number generation with NumPy. Then I set up a for loop to do max guesses iterations. Next, I determine the bounding box of the data by getting the min and max value of every feature dimension. Then I randomly guess weights between negative 1000 and positive 1000, which is somewhat arbitrary, but that's fine for now. Next, I pick a random point, P, in the bounding box and calculate B such that my hyperplane goes through P. Keep in mind that if the hyperplane goes through P, it means that W dot P plus B equals zero, so B equals negative W dot P. Lastly, I check if the hyperplane separates the data. So if the hyperplane separates the data, it means where Y equals one, X dot W plus B should be positive, and where Y equals zero, X dot W plus B should be negative. We can imagine the hyperplane making a prediction about each point. And if all the hyperplane's predictions match the true labels, we know it's a separating hyperplane. Note that np.sign returns one if the input is positive, zero if the input is zero, and negative one if the input is negative. And since our data is labeled with ones and zeros, not ones and negative ones, we have to transform the predictions into ones and zeros as well. Also note that if a point lies directly on the hyperplane, meaning x dot w plus b equals zero, then we consider it misclassified. Now let's take what we've built and generalize it into a reusable model. Here I've taken our guess and check function and refactored it into a perceptron class with some extra pizzazz. Namely, my perceptron class has three methods. An init method for directly building a perceptron if you know W, B, and Y classes ahead of time. A fit method for fitting a perceptron to some data using the guess and check learning algorithm. And a predict method for using a fitted perceptron to make predictions on new data. Note that fit here allows y to be a numpy array with any binary class labels. So instead of ones and zeros, y could have ones and negative ones, or trues and falses, or a's and b's, or whatever, as long as it has exactly two distinct classes. Also, in the fit method, we don't allow a point to lie exactly on the separating hyperplane. But in the predict method, if it happens that a point falls on our separating hyperplane, we arbitrarily predict class zero for the sample. Let's see this puppy in action. We'll start by reading some data into a data frame called DF. Then we'll initialize a new perceptron object. Then we'll fit the perceptron to the first 80 rows of the data. And then we can use the fitted perceptron to predict on the last 20 rows of the data. Take some time to study this code because we're gonna be refactoring it in the next section. 